Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really glad to have with me for the first time Jean Lefleur. He's the president and CEO of Arvista Gold Corporation. Jean is a professional geologist. He's had uh, lots of experience over 30 years. He's worked with many major mining companies in the past, uh, companies like uh, Newmont, Falcon Bridge, Placer Dome. Uh, he has, uh, of course, he is a geologist, and he's, uh, he's worked with uh, a company called McWaters Mining back in, in Quebec in 1998 to 2003, uh, but he's been involved in some significant gold discoveries up there in and around the Valdor Malartic uh, camps, including uh, his involvement in developing the bulk gold exploration program at the Canadian Malartic Gold Property, which uh, eventually became Osisco. Uh, uh, Cisco's 10 million ounce uh, Canadian Malarctic deposit and indeed uh, Jean thinks that there's an awful lot in common with the project that his company Arvista Gold is looking at geologically in common with that very big deposit so uh, thanks for joining me today Jean it's, it's good to have you with me thanks Jay uh, much appreciated Really good. Uh, it is an exciting story. It's a company that I've invested some of my own retirement money in. I'm really uh, very excited about what you've got going up there. I should mention to our listeners that you trade in Canada under the symbol AVA, and you can buy it down here in the States, as I have, under the symbol ARVSF. Uh, there's about 132 million shares outstanding, recently trading uh, at around $0.27. Cents. Um, I believe that's in, in U.S. money. Uh, and uh, giving it a market cap of around $36 million. Um, so you have, a, I think, uh, what you have on the books at this point in time is a gold resource a measured and inferred resource of around 200,000 ounces and 2.8 million ounces in the inferred, uh, or I should say a measured and indicated of 200,000 ounces and a, uh, an inferred category, you have about 2.8 million ounces. Do I have that right, Gian? Yes, that's right, uh, Jay. Um, and uh, most of it is uh, um, was a lot of the work was done pre 2011 um, when we acquired the property, and we focused on getting the deposit from you know around half a million ounce to close to the three million ounce globally. Um, so that our work from 2012 to 2014. Well, three million ounces is, it certainly seems to be a good start. Um, your project is located north in northwestern Quebec, and as I look at the map, you know I realize it's very close to a number of other projects and mines that I've been familiar with that I've had in my newsletter in the past. Can you talk a little bit about your project, um, where it is located, and what um, what sort of geological uh, endowment you have there? I mean, obviously, it's uh, it's an area that is. A very has had you know huge amounts of, of gold discovered so far, and apparently a lot more are yet to come. But can you talk a little bit about the geological setting that endows this area so much, so richly in gold? Sure, Jay. You know, look, we're right in the middle of the Abitibi Belt um, on the Quebec side, but if you go west of us, uh, obviously Timmins, Kirkland Lake, um, you know, probably in the area of 150 million ounces uh, produced out of those two camps. Then you have the more recent discoveries or rediscoveries, the, the Detour Gold uh, story with their 15 million ounce. And if you go, you know, 100, a bit over 100 kilometers to the south, you get into the Valdor and Malartic camp where um, Osisco had discovered and again rediscovered the became Malartic uh, deposit and that was subsequently bought out. Um, Integra is doing a lot of work around the Valdor camp. So uh, we're right in the middle. We're about 60 kilometers, 35 to 40 miles southeast or southwest of Metogamy, which is Glencore, the base metal camp. And we're just north of, uh, there's an old smaller producer, uh, the old Sleeping Giant operation uh, that was recently bought out by a local junior, um, and they're producing a small amount of gold there. So, you know, the camp itself, the entire belt, you know, was close to 200 million ounces of gold produced since the early 1900s. So, you know, it's obvious that there's still a lot of gold left. And our project, um, you know, we spent quite a bit of time last year uh, after the first financing, the first million that we financed, uh, we financed in total 7.5 million Canadian. Um, but we decided to go back and relog a lot of the core, which had never been done uh, over the 40-year history of the project. Um, there, there, there's a st- substantial amount of, of work that we needed to be done to basically 
remodel this uh, deposit in a in a bulk gold style uh, approach, and uh, so we spent the, the bulk of the last year doing that. Um, and so we've come up with a very simplified geology. So matrix rocks at the bottom, more felsic rocks at the top, and in between you have these iron rich units almost like iron formations with porphyries and lots of faulting, lots of alteration, some sulfide development, so all the criteria you need so that if you have a bit of gold in the system, this unit uh, in between unit, I call it this transitional unit, is much like a sponge that will pick up a lot of the gold, and that's where the bulk of the 3 million ounces uh, that we have on the property, lower quality for now, but uh, in terms of the bulk type potential, it's significant on the property. I mean, the system itself is almost 20 square uh, miles, um, and that's huge, right? So um, it's one of the biggest ones in the Abbey Um and it still needs quite a bit of work. There's never been mining here. Um, so our, our big focus right now is to get this up towards the 5 million ounces um, with uh, drilling. So it's, uh, look, there's good potential, uh, great geology, uh, there's jurisprudence with the other camps, so we're well on our way. You've had some 200,000 meters of historical drilling there. How much of that drilling do you reckon has been factored into your current uh, resource of nearly 3 million ounces in, in both in all categories? It's probably about half of the drilling right now, and it equates to close to uh, 90,000 samples um, that fit in. So the issue we had was that a lot of the older drilling, say pre-2000 drilling, um, was focused on looking for quartz veins, low gold type deposits. And since that time, um, the previous vendor had made a nice little discovery, you know, 180 meters of one gram, but kind of left it aside in, in the early 2000s. And it was just about the same time that came Arctic was coming on stream. Mm-hmm. So people hadn't really looked at, you know, the bulk gold type potential. And one of the key elements of the Dewey project has never been mined. So we definitely have high-grade zones. We've got nine of them, um, anywhere between, say, 2 grams and 20 grams. Um, 200,000 ounces is kind of the median uh, for these higher-grade deposits. So uh, that's significant. But the low-grade envelopes in the porphyries are definitely a a game-changer here. So what you're saying, if I hear what you're saying, uh, other projects in that area, for example, the Malartic that uh, Osisco developed, uh, had some high-grade mining taken from it, and what you're saying is there's there's never been any of the sort of higher-grade load targets taken out there as, as there has been in some of the other projects. Is that right? And so does that mean the potential possibly to have, you know, somewhat higher grade overall? Yes, exactly, Jay. I mean, that's 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 the model. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we have nine of them. So, and this is between surface and say three hundred meters, no more. And uh, so, you know, the idea of remodeling this in three dimension uh, will probably give us a hint as to where we should go for more of these high grade zones uh, the, the, as we go in the extensions at depth. Um, and the fact that. You know, the, much of the resources within the top 300 meters, mm-hmm. you know, it, it bodes well. I mean, we still have, you know, maybe another 300 or 400 meters uh, depth uh, to look at the ball gold potential. So, look, it, it, it's there. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's over, a, a, say, a seven-kilometer long trend, a couple of kilometers wide. Um, so seven kilometers is about five miles by a mile and a half uh, wide. So it's quite significant uh, in terms of the size. And look, it, there's a lot of empty space, a lot of room to find more of these high grade zones. And obviously, the low grade is, uh, you know, there's still quite a bit to, to test there too. So immediately, you're looking at an area with a strike length of about seven kilometers. Is that what I heard you say? Yes, yes. And, and that is what you're really working on now and what you'll be looking to try to build up that 5 million ounce uh, resource that you were talking about? That's right. I mean, that's all the focus now. And, you know, we announced, uh, you know, about a month ago, a little more than a month ago, that we're starting that 30,000 meter drill program. Mm-hmm. 
And that's a result of the financing. The last financing we did at uh, 15 cents, so we raised uh, 6 million Canadian. Um, so the money is being spent there to drill. So any indication of the 5 million ounces, that's what we want to pick up. I mean, that's the, that's the near term objective. And as you go a little further down the line, um, you know, keep building the resources, keep producing uh, resource reports, and, uh, you know, if we get to that threshold, uh, then maybe then we'll see what the next threshold is, right? You uh, talk to me about an 18-month and a 36-month plan. Uh, is that 18 month? Does that include last year, six months, and, and this year, 2017? Or what 18 months are we talking about there? And, and your 30,000 meter drill program is that is that part of that 18 month program? That's right, Jay. Uh, 18 month. The countdown started in December 2016. Uh-huh. So the idea is to is to you know, sufficiently uh, drill uh, to get up into the inferred category and probably transfer a good portion of the resources into much higher categories than measured mm-hmm. indicated so that we get closer to our magic number and say the next uh, 36 months is basically, uh, you know, is to take those resources, bring them towards reserve, and definitely initiate feasibility on the first 5 million ounces, but at the same time keep exploring, right? So uh, yeah. who knows the ultimate number here? It could be much larger. Uh, time will tell. Well, you mentioned that I think you, I heard you say that about half of the 200,000 meters have been factored in to the current resource. So you're modeling this thing into a three-dimensional uh, a model, and you're you're twinning a lot of those holes, I guess, that you were drilled before that were not modeled into, that were not built into the model. So it seems to me that you might be able to come up with significantly higher numbers once those, that full 200,000 meters have been factored into the model. That's right. Look, we're doing, we did close to 7,000 new samples from that, but obviously, um, you know, we need to do more. I mean, we did the first 7,000 just to look at the most obvious mineralization that was never sampled. Mm-hmm. And we're getting results out of that. So they will be all incorporated eventually into the next round of resource estimation once we get the 30,000 meters done. So, and again, you know, we may go back and say, well, look, there's 100,000 meters left. Let's continue with sampling. I mean, the, you know, the value of this core is immense. You know, in today's terms, it's more than uh, uh, $30 million, right? So yeah. that, you know, might as well use it to its fullest if they've only sampled, you know, 25, 30% of that core, well, what's to say there's not more mineralization left, especially the type of mineralization we're looking for is, is disseminated gold, it's not vein type, so mm-hmm. that to me is, uh, again, it's a good positive uh, type deposit that, um, you know, who knows what the final number is. John, I think you've indicated that you expect to do a, an updated PEA this year. Is that still in the cards? Yes, it's still in the cards, and um, you know it all depends on the next resource number and where we where we're going with this. Uh, we we had hired uh, at the end of Q uh, at the end of Q two last year, Keith Menti as our COO. Uh, Keith, uh, I've worked with him many years back, but uh, he's a senior engineer, mining engineer, and he's uh, brought a number of projects towards production. Definitely past feasibility. So with Keith's involvement, we're running uh, parallel engineering, metallurgy. Uh, we're looking at you know the possibilities of the super pit type model. And I think that, you know, very, uh, it's a great approach. I mean, one should always do your exploration, especially more advanced exploration with that in mind. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, whatever the back of the envelope PEA style type studies will orient or exploration, um, you know, where are the ounces, right? So can, if we focus on a concentrated area and we get all our ounces there, well, could these ounces be economic? So we, we're doing a lot of internal studies to, to, to do that. And uh, look, I'm sure that at some point we will come updated with a new PEA, which might lead to something else, right? So sure. one thing at a time. Right now, let's, get, let's see that 5 million ounces, right? Sure. So so your, uh, your your 18-month program, well, I guess, would take you through the middle of 2018 then, more or less. Yes, exactly. And then uh, at that point, what will you do? Because you've also talked to me about a 
Well, even probably quicker than that, right? So if we um, do the drilling and the indications are good, uh, we'll certainly look at, at more financing. I mean, our star price is still doing well. Um, it peaked in Canadian dollars, uh, 38 nine cents uh, uh, last week. So now it's a bit down, but the markets are down too. But to me, it's much harder than the 15 cents we financed last. So maybe we'll do a bit more financing, but the key is to just keep increasing uh, the amount of drilling. Uh, get confidence on that. So maybe within a shorter time, we'll be able to you know, initiate TEA um, and then just continue improving on the quality of the ounces. Mm-hmm. Um, if we find one or two more high-grade zones, more low-grade, then we'll update, obviously, the mineral resource. And uh, who knows? You may maybe accelerate towards feasibility if the numbers look right. Mm-hmm. So, But the idea is, is the 36 months is basically to, to complete feasibility on at least $5 million ounces, and I'm very confident that we'll be able to do that. Lee, you mentioned a $6 million raise. That will take you through this year or not? You need yes, to raise a little uh, more, possibly. Yes, we will, and uh, like I say, we'll do it uh, with the current financiers that we have in place. Uh, all of the funds from last year's financing has been basically placed with very strategic investors. It's not you know public at large. Sure. Uh, there was a, s- a small amount of flow through Canadian, but it was one client uh, through through a PI Financial, mm-hmm. uh, primary capitals involved here. We're talking Power One also, and they, you know, basically are there for the longer haul. Sure. And uh, so, if we need more money, we can uh, basically go go through them. And uh, you know, it's more on the retail side at this point. And if ever it becomes more institutional, it'll come much later, right? Mm-hmm. As we go towards feasibility um, and and beyond that. But for now, we're doing quite well with uh, the retail individuals we have. John, could you talk a little bit about your management team and how far you can take this project on your own, uh, or is it your, really your desire to get this to a point where a major says, I've got to have that, or ideally to have several majors saying, I've got to have that deposit? That's right. I mean, right now, if you look at our stock price, you look at the $3 million ounces, we're probably valued in the you know, $10 to $12 range um, uh, in Canadian dollars terms mm-hmm. in the app per ounce in the ground, which, which is okay. I feel that this is great. So as we improve the quality of the ounce, and go towards the five million. Um, that number will come up, and we know for a fact that at uh, you know feasibility ounces in the Abitibi where we have big mills could be valued between two and three hundred dollars an ounce mm-hmm. uh, U.S. basically, and that's significant. So if you have five million ounces, well, you look at the valuation of that. At the same time. You know, the team now, uh, from an exploration perspective, we're okay, right? So we have hired the people to to take us towards that five million ounces, and also from the engineering side, mm-hmm. with Keith Minty under his guidance. If we need to bring it to feasibility, if it's going that way, he could do it, right? So we can go all the way with this. It's 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 not a problem. The key is to get that five million ounces, and sure, it's obvious that. You know, people are looking at us. Uh, it's, the, it's the remaining, the last remaining uh, bulk oil project um, of significant size in the Abitibi. I mean, there are some in other belts, but for the Abitibi, it's the last one. So, right. you know, it's obvious that you know people will look at this, and you know, we'll just see with time you know, how uh, you know how the market reacts to us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in summary, what should investors be looking at then as as this year unfolds? I guess just keep their eye on the drill results and uh, towards the end of the year, a PEA, I suppose. Yes, I mean, obviously, lots of news to come out, so on result. Um, and, you know, you may get spectacular results, but probably standard results, because mm-hmm. uh, you look at the results, we actually had a press release this morning, uh, people say, oh, you know, you don't have 100 meters of uh, 8 grams or something, but that's, that's that's not what we're looking for right now. I mean, we're looking for continuity of zones between the high-grade pods. Mm-hmm. And sure. The high-grade pods will take care of grades, so we'll find more of these. And then the low-grades connect them so that you can have a, an all-encompassing um, resource model of, you know, somewhere between 0.7 and 1.5 grams, right? So yeah. those are the possibilities. And the more you add, the better. So look at the news releases, the updated resource some of the metallurgy, some of the drill results coming a bit later, and uh, 
look, it's, it'll all come together uh, at some point, and uh, you know, take a look at a stock price. Uh, and, you know, it's um, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, and uh, there's definitely some interest, uh, as we can see with the volumes. Uh, last week, uh, we we're one of the best trading uh, companies on the TSXV uh, in terms of volumes. So there will be weeks where you get a lot of people coming in, and there'll be other weeks it'll be quieter. But uh, it's it's longer term. That's what we're looking for. Thank you very much for being with us today, and I look forward to updating your story sometime in the future. Excellent. Thanks very much, Jay. It was, uh, it was great to, to talk to you. Thank you very much, Sean. 